India Sweet. Thank you so much for joining us this week. You know, I know everybody was like, what happened last week? And in full disclosure, I did record a show, but after it, I was editing it up, and I kept nodding off. And like, I knew I was tired because a lot goes on here. But it was only like four and a half minutes into the show. And I'm thinking, okay, well, if I'm this bored, then I can't expect anybody else to watch this. So scrap it, try again this week, take two. Actually take three, but we'll talk about that another day because I'm still not ready to go into that one yet. Today we are doing a sweet and spicy Mexican chicken over a saffron basmati rice. And uh, what you're going to want to do, you want to get your pan and you want to put it over like a medium high heat because we're going to brown our four chicken breasts. You don't want to cook them, you want to just brown them right now, both sides, so they get a nice crispness to them. And I have a package here of um, my favorite taco seasoning. I use El Paso. You can use whichever one you, you like. I put it in a cup because I'm not going to show the package because they're not paying me. When they pay me, I'll show you the package. But anyway, you want to take about a tablespoon and just season your chicken up on both sides. Add a little bit of salt to it just because there is salt inside the taco seasoning. But... It's going to like stew cook, and so the salt will get into the sauce, and it'll, it'll make sense. Just trust me. Okay, now we're going to put them in our pan. That nice loud sizzle is what you want. Now, you can use four to six chicken breasts for this recipe. It just all depends on um, what the size of your pan is, because you'll definitely have enough salt to go with it. Okay, so while those are browning up, okay, so I told you last week's show was boring, and there is kind of a reason or what I would just like to blame it on. I did, I don't know if you guys, I'm addicted to TMZ, okay? So I watched the TMZ Live, and I watched the uh, TMZ Newsroom show. Well, TMZ Live had hit me up on Skype to see if I wanted to be on the show. I've done it a few times in the past, and it's always a lot of fun. And, but this time, you know, I was like, okay, I'm doing my show, but I really don't want to throw up my continuity, you know, when I'm trying to do it. And then I thought, well, she's been hitting, Sarah had been hitting me up for a while and had hair and makeup done. And people, unlike Beyonce, I don't wake up like this. It takes a small village and a lot of work. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, I already have hair and makeup done, so I'll just go ahead and I'll do it. And I was supposed to be on early in the show because they wanted me to talk about Snoop Dogg um, and his son's birthday party at first. And then she came back around and she hit me like an hour later. She said, well, we're going to get Snoop on, so can you talk about John Travolta and um, Adina Menzel from the Oscars? Okay, sure, that's fine. She said, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, you know, I write up my little thing. I, I get it all together, nice practice it or whatever. And... I'm waiting, and like I'm doing the show, but then out of the corner of my eye, I'm waiting to see when she's telling me to go on. So I don't think I was really focused, you know? And after all that time that I spent right before I was going to go on, she's like telling me, okay, you're up next. Oh, can you talk about Snoop and his son's birthday? I was like, wait a minute, what? She's like, please, can you talk about Snoop and his son? I'm like, OMG, you're telling me to go live, and you're switching me at the last minute. She might be lucky I do this for a living, and I'm kind of good at being thrown into situations that uh, you don't always get to practice for first. You know, being a, a sports uh, anchor during the NFL lockout, and I was actually on duty uh, on air when the lockout ended, and it was chaos, and it was madness. So you learn how to fly off the cuff. But when I went on, what made me so mad is Harvey and Charles didn't even let me finish my joke because I was at the end of the time clock, and they didn't even let me get it out. Well, if you don't know, Snoop threw his son. Uh, well, here, watch watch the clip. Hey, this is Indy, and I'm calling from Fort Washington, Maryland, and I'm commenting on the Snoop throwing the party for his son. Um, it was a little weird. Kudos for them for wow. showing their son a movie when Eddie Murphy was still funny, but it really seemed like it was more the parent wow. idea it was. Well, okay, India, India, I get, I, no, I get I your point, but it is one of those movies that kids can enjoy too, and it looks like it was. Right. The movie still really holds fun. up, but I would imagine Snoop watching it, he's probably watching it with his kids multiple she times. Wish he didn't have a fur coat on. Okay. Oh, boy, nice, nice shot at uh, Eddie Murphy there. Okay. 
so what I was going to say was, I thought it was weird that he get came down to uh, She's Your Queen to be. And I just thought that was weird that the son is walking out to that. He's 18. The parents walk out. It was, it was really weird. I know they wanted to do the whole dance sequence. I can understand that. But what they should have had in there, this is why I love this show, because I get to talk about my favorite character two weeks in a row. Like an a, a, a imitator doing Randy Watson, you know, the guy that was on the stage singing, I believe the children are our future. And he's like, sexual chocolate. And he's like, stop, drop the mic, point. And then go off like he does in a movie. My fa- it, to this day, that scene still makes me cry laughing. That's what he should have done. And then he should have came out. You know, it's like sexual chocolate. Now she's your queen to be. I didn't get that at all. And then when the girl came out, and it's just, it was just really, really weird. And yes, I did throw a shot at Eddie Murphy. You know why? Because I'm still not over SNL 40. Hmm. All right. These are browning up nicely. So I think we can take them out. And what we'll do is we'll move on to our onions and our peppers. Now, what you want to remember, please turn your pan down because it's really high from the browning. And when we put in our onions and garlic and peppers, we don't want them to cook too fast. Okay. All right, guys. So next up, we're going to put in our onions and our peppers. I have cut up here either a small red onion or half of a medium size, a medium dice, and we'll put this in the pan first. Make sure your pan has cooled down, remember. You don't want to cool too much, but you don't want it to put in and then they immediately start cooking really hard. You want to saute them up just a bit. Then I have two cloves of garlic, which you can shave right on in there. And people say, you use garlic a lot. Yes, I do, because you know what? It tastes good and it's good for you. What can I say? Um, and then we're gonna stir this around and let this saute for a few minutes while we cut our pepper. Okay, so now we're gonna cut up a half of a green pepper and a half of a yellow bell pepper. Um, and this is another way. Uh, maybe tomorrow night or on a Friday night, use the other half of the peppers to either make a shrimp stir fry or fajita. And uh, you can use the leftover rice if you have some when you finish. Just put them in like a medium dice. Yeah. Okay, so a few weeks ago with the Oscars, and I'm not going to, you know, go back over that whole thing because that's been beaten with a dead horse already. I missed my chance. But anyway... The part that I really wanted to talk about was the part uh, I was supposed to talk about on TMZ, the whole John Travolta thing. And yeah, it was cute when, he, when you know, Adina Menzel mispronounced his name, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. But when he came out with all the touchy, you know, face thing, I'm like, what is, what is wrong with you? Is this planned? She doesn't, I feel violated. She looks like the camera shouldn't be on right now. And apparently, no, it was not planned. And he had been doing this even on the red carpet to Scarlett Johansson. And I'm like, what is what is wrong with John Travolta? You know how when people get kind of old, they get slightly kooky. And John Travolta has had stories out there about him for years. I'm not going to go into it because I love me some Danny Zuko. But, I mean, there have been stories about him for a long time. But I noticed him when he was in the crowd. And he was smiling and his face is like this. And it's like... Is that John Travolta? Like, he doesn't even look real. It's just like, it's in like a, 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 a state of like Botox shock or something. It reminded me of the face that they use in the mask uh, in the movie uh, The Purge, I think it is. That's what it looked out, kind of creepy. Or even the screen mask. I don't know. Anyway, I, two years in a row we're talking about John Travolta and he hasn't had a movie out in years. Okay. Now, next up, we're going to do our Serrano peppers. Ordinarily, I could use one because normally they're much longer, but these are kind of short. So I have two because mama likes it hot, caliente, baby. Um, so I'm using two here. For me, for you at home, it just depends on how you like it. I always say do to your spice level. Um, and with these, of course, this, the seeds on the inside are the most spicy part. So if you want the peppers without all the spice, just take out the seeds. Okay, these are all nicely chopped, though. You want to make sure you chop them up really good. And I know at home you're probably saying, why does she have the glove on her hand? Okay, let's put in our green and yellow peppers. 
Well, I had the glove on my hand because unlike the same pepper family of these uh, bell peppers, these Serrano babies, they're hot, okay? And touching them, cutting them, if you don't wash your hands extremely thorough, and now I say, I mean, I'm talking about washing them more when, than when you have chicken on them. And you touch any part of your body, let's just say it's not pretty, okay? And I stupidly, um, in test kitchen, because all the recipes I do here, I make up. So on certain, on like a Thursday or a Friday, I run a test kitchen of the recipe to come up with it. And let's just say through one of those mini tests that I did throughout the week, I touched my eye as I'm writing down, you know, what taking out and what putting in. And it's one of those things, it's like, God dang it, are you serious? And then you just got to write it out. And then my eye was like dripping and dripping. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. It was horrible. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I wear the glove. Okay, now we're going to get the rest of our taco seasoning. And we're just going to go ahead and sprinkle that all in along with just a little bit of salt, just a tad. Mix it up nicely. And then we're going to let them saute for about three to five minutes. And if it gets a crust at the bottom of the pan while it's starting to caramelize, don't worry because we're going to put some wine in there and that's going to deglaze all that goodness up off the bottom of the pan. Okay, our peppers and onions are caramelizing beautifully. Now we're going to get about half a cup of wine and deglaze our pan. Now I always say, if you cook with a good wine, you can drink with a good wine. After you finish your recipe, it's enough for a glass and for you and your dinner mate to enjoy. And scrape the goodness off the bottom of the pan and let the alcohol cook out of that for a second. So coming up is the NFL Draft. The combine was a few weeks ago, and the, the big question is, who's going to be the big star, Marcus Mariota or Jameis Winston, and who's going to get taken with the number one overall pick? Number one overall pick, and it looks like it's going to be uh, Jameis Winston. And for you out there who, who know, I'm not the biggest fan of him because while he might be smart with the X's and O's, he knows no other letter of the alphabet. So... I have a really big issue with that. Also, his character. He has shown that he does not have or use the best judgment. And I don't know if I can entrust my franchise to that. I mean, me being a Redskins fan, we have our own issues. So I won't even go into that. And no, I do not want a Dominic and Sue for any of my fellow Redskins fans out there. He's dirty. I don't want him. But Jameis Winston, I just, when you get with the, you know, into the big time with the money and the lights and you don't have a curfew, you turn into a Johnny Manziel if you are not groomed properly. And so for me, if I had a number one pick, I'm going to pick Marcus Mariota. Two totally different styles of play, but at the end of the day, if I'm going to entrust my franchise, I need to know that that guy is worth it. I will say this, though. Tampa Bay is the best place for Jameis Winston to be because he has Lovey Smith. And if he's going to make it in this league, he's going to need a guy like Lovey Smith to coach him on and off the field to make him want to succeed. So all in all, I will say that's probably a good fit for him. It's just that they have the number one overall pick. So either way, it's going to be a gamble. Hell, and in the draft class where we got Robert Griffin and it was him and Andrew Luckett who was going to be the better one, but Russell Wilson is the one that has uh, one and it could have had two championship rings before you know either guy even gets to a championship game. Okay. So, our wine is cooking down. We're going to take three tablespoons of sugar, mix it in, and then I have a half a cup of chicken stock. And then two cups of crushed tomatoes, not diced, not whole crushed tomatoes. And we're going to stir this up. Mix it nice and good, and then we're going to add 
our chicken in it and we're going to cover it and let it cook for about 20 minutes. And like I said, put them in. Make sure your heat is not too high. Cover and sit for 20 minutes. Okay, so while our chicken is cooking, we're going to work on our saffron basmati rice. Uh, here I have a cup and a half of chicken stock. Now, you can use water if you like. I just like using chicken stock with my rice because it gives it that much of a bolder flavor. I have a cup here of basmati rice. And then I have a pinch of saffron. Now, saffron are these little tiny red thread-like things. And... Um, they're not cheap, I'll be honest with you. Let's do a pinch of salt and give it a stir. They're not cheap, but you only need a pinch at a time. It lasts you for a while and there's nothing, when I say nothing, nothing like the taste of saffron, which actually, fun fact, comes from the Crocus sativus uh, plant where it blooms in like the fall in places like Germany and Spain, and especially in Spain, I mean, you know, women go in the fields and pick hundreds of thousands of these flowers, you know, flowers just to make a, a few little ounces. Okay, so you wanna turn it all the way up after you get your rice in and bring it to a boil. For some reason, most people bring their water to the boil and uh, to a boil and then put in the rice. Note, put everything in and then let it come up to a boil. So we're gonna let this come up to a boil and then we're gonna cover it and let it cook for about 20 minutes. All right, looks like it is done. Okay, so we're gonna take all of our pieces of chicken out. And the one thing I forgot to tell you before, my bad, is before you um, cover your chicken and make sure all the sauce is covering your chicken so we can get a nice, good, saucy cook there. We're gonna take our four chicken breasts out and we are going to shred them before we put it over our saffron basmati rice. And once again, this week, um, a very light fare meal, two forks. Let's take a nice big one and shred it up here. Just pull it apart. Once again, this recipe, like last week, is not too heavy um, at all. The peppers are good for you. The only thing it has in it is a little bit of sugar. Because, you know, when I do this show and I edit it up, I notice I have this, this thing, you know, right? Like this extra fat going on here. I don't know how to get, get rid of that because you can't do like chin chin setups or is it like if you just lose overall weight, will you lose it there too? I don't know because it's starting to look like Jabba the Hutt and it's not, it's not cute. All right. Okay. So we're going to finish shredding our chicken here. We got our rice that's done. After we shred it up, we're going to put some rice in a bowl, put the chicken on top sauce. And I like to top it off with a little bit of cheese and green onions. my favorite time time to eat thanks again so much guys for joining us for another episode of let's cook let's chat i hope you enjoy our recipe this week our sweet and spicy mexican chicken over the saffron basmati rice if you make it please let me know send me some pictures you can find me on facebook for this recipe and so much more at india sweet also on instagram india sweet hashtag your stuff let's cook let's chat there you can find all of my goodies that I make and I can find yours also on Twitter at Indosweet Sports. So until next week, guys. Oh, I almost forgot a quick shout out to one Miss Maria Wilson for making our Orzo New Orleans a few weeks back. And uh, one shout out to Miss Kiana Brooks who went way back and made the scallop chicken uh, and shrimp and white wine garlic sauce. Thank you guys so much. So please, if you send me your pictures, I'll put them up. It makes me so happy to see that you're cooking and you like it too. All right, until next week, and always, always enjoy your food. Bye.